Who did Cain marry? Cain knew his wife, one of Adam's descendants, and she was conceived and gave birth to in Enoch. And Cain built a city and named it Enoch, after the name of his son. Genesis 4, verse 17. Perhaps no woman mentioned in scripture has caused more confusion among Christians. In the Garden of Eden, humanity began with two figures handcrafted by God, Adam and Eve. As the first humans, Adam and Eve were the bearers of God's image, pure and beautiful. Their existence was a testament to God's love and creativity. From the union of these two came their offspring. Among their children, two names stand out prominently, Cain and Abel. Adam made love to his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. Genesis 4 verse 1 Shortly after, Abel, his brother, came into the world. Their stories of love, jealousy, and tragedy would set an example for the human experience. Cain was the firstborn son of Adam and Eve, the first man and woman created by God. Unfortunately, Cain is best known for committing the first murder in the Bible. As the narrative unfolds, a question emerges from the shadows. After the infamous incidents where Cain, in a fit of jealousy, he is exiled to the land of Nod. The name Nod means wandering in Hebrew. The land of Nod isn't described in detail, but its name symbolizes Cain's fate as a wanderer and an outcast. There, the Bible mentions, Cain made love to his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Genesis 4 verse 17. The lingering question that has baffled many is, who was his wife? Where did she come from? When we read about the early chapters of Genesis, we're introduced to Adam, Eve, Cain, and Abel. However, after Cain's tragic act of murder, the scripture tells us he moved to the land of Nod and had descendants. This leads us to wonder, from where did his wife come? The Bible provides some hints that can help us unravel this mystery. One thing we know for sure is that Adam and Eve had many children. The Bible says, After Seth was born, Adam lived 800 years and had other sons and daughters. Genesis 5 verse 4 This verse implies that besides Cain, Abel, and Seth, Adam and Eve had numerous other offspring. If that's the case, then it's logical to assume that Cain married one of his sisters or a close relative. But isn't marrying a relative wrong? Today, marrying a close relative is frowned upon, mainly because of the potential genetic complications. However, things were different in the early days of humanity. Cain married his sister or other blood relative. And Genesis 5 verse 4 specifically states that Adam had sons and daughters. Marriage of close relatives was not forbidden then, nor was it genetically risky. It wasn't until much later in the book of Leviticus that God set down laws prohibiting close inter-family marriages. It was when God gave the people of the law of Moses that he established laws forbidding a man from marrying his sister or niece. None of you shall approach anyone who is near to kin of him to uncover his nakedness. I am the Lord. Leviticus 18 verse 6. At that time, God forbade marriage between the following. Mother, father, sister, brother, half-brother, brother's wife, aunt, uncle, stepmother, granddaughter, daughter-in-law, and son-in-law. Before that time, it was not forbidden. Leviticus 18 verses 7 to 17 God forbade intermarriage at the time of Moses to protect the increasing chance of a deformed offspring resulting from such a union. In addition, the future health of the nation Israel was ensured by this commandment. Furthermore, the commandment against this type of practice strengthened the structure of the family unit. Time not stated it is important to note that the Bible does not provide any information about when Cain killed Abel 
or the age at which this murder occurred. The scripture merely states that it happened at the end of days. It is not necessary to assume that Cain and Abel were young men or teenagers at the time. If each of them were over 50 years old, then there could have been a significant number of people living during that time. This is supported by the fact that Adam and Eve had many more sons and daughters besides Cain and Abel. Genesis 5 verses 3 to 4 When Adam had lived a hundred and thirty years, he became the father of a son in his own likeness, according to his image, and named him Seth. After he became the father of Seth, Adam lived eight hundred years and had other sons and daughters. The Bible states that Adam was 130 years old when Seth was born, and he lived for another 800 years. God had promised to greatly multiply Eve's conception. Genesis 3 verse 16, Amplified Bible To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. In pain you will give birth to children. Yet your desire and longing will be for your husband, and he will rule with authority over you and be responsible for you. According to Jewish tradition, Adam had 33 sons and 23 daughters. This means that there were many people living at the time of Cain and Abel. It has been estimated that approximately 32,000 people could have been alive when this tragic event took place. Long Lifespans in addition, Genesis 5 documents extensive lifespans of Adam's descendants. If we assume that each couple gave birth to children for only half of their lifespan, then the population at the time of Adam's death could have been quite large. Additionally, the genealogy in Genesis 5 indicates that every descendant of Adam up to Lamech had other sons and daughters. With these facts in mind, there would be no problem finding a wife for Cain. Prior to his banishment, Cain could have had many women from whom to take a wife. Christians who may have concerns with this answer should consider that according to the Bible, Noah's grandchildren had no choice but to marry either their siblings or first cousins as there were no other people around at that time. 1 Peter 3 verse 20, Genesis 7 verse 7 it is also worth noting that Abraham married his half-sister, Genesis 20, verse 2 and 12. Isaac, on the other hand, married Rebekah, the daughter of his cousin Bethuel, Genesis 24, verses 15 and 67. And Jacob, who was Leah and Rachel's cousin, married both of them. Therefore, it is evident that the Bible did not prohibit the marriage of close relatives until the time of Moses. Genesis 20 verse 12 Besides, he actually is my half-sister. She is the daughter of my father, Terah, but not of my mother, and she became my wife. While Moses' father, Amram, married his father's sister, his aunt, Jochebed. Exodus 6 verse 20 Exodus 6 verse 20 Amram married his father's sister Jochebed, and she gave birth to Aaron and Moses, and Amram lived a hundred and thirty-seven years. Based on the information provided in the Bible, it's unclear who Cain married. However, we can make an educated guess that he most likely wed one of his close relatives. Given the fact that Adam and Eve had many children, it's most likely that Cain married one of his close relatives. According to Genesis 4 verse 14, Cain feared for his life after killing Abel, which implies that there were already other descendants of Adam and Eve living in the world. The fact that Adam and Eve had many other children before Cain took a wife is mentioned in Genesis 5 verse 4. It is highly probable that there were not only children, but also grandchildren of Adam and Eve living at the time of Abel's death. Pre-Adamic Humanity There are some who suggest that Cain's wife belonged to a group of pre-Adamic humans that existed prior to Adam and Eve. However, this hypothesis raises more questions than it answers. The Bible makes it clear 
that Adam was the first man created, and the idea that Cain could have married someone from this pre-existing race contradicts this. Genesis 2 verse 7, Then the Lord God formed, that is, created the body of, man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being, an individual complete in body and spirit. Genesis 2 verse 18 to 19. Now the Lord God said, It is not good, beneficial, for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper, one who balances him, a counterpart who is suitable and complementary for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground every animal of the field and every bird of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called a living creature, that was its name. Furthermore, his wife Eve was given her name because she was the mother of all living. Genesis 3 verse 20, Amplified Bible. The man named his wife Eve, life spring, life giver, because she was the mother of all living. These two facts rule out the idea of some pre-Adamic race from which Cain chose a wife. Other children. Some Bible scholars propose that the existence of other humans outside of Cain and Abel can be explained by suggesting that Cain and Abel were not necessarily the first two sons of Adam and Eve. They argue that other sons and daughters may have been born before Cain and Abel, and that the Bible is simply emphasizing these two. However, the Bible does not mention any other children of Adam and Eve before Cain and Abel. It is possible that other children existed before Cain and Abel, but such a claim lacks support in Scripture and cannot be completely verified. If all of humanity did descend from Adam and Eve and their first two sons were Cain and Abel, then how do we explain the existence of Cain's wife? What happened to the family of Cain? And Cain knew his wife, and he built a city. The beginning of industry and urbanization can be seen here. Man centered from the start. The city was named after his son's name, not God-centered. The fall of the human race continued and even increased, the generations following Cain. Genesis 4 verses 18 to 22. To Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begot Mehuyael, and Mehuyael begot Methushael, and Methushael begot Lamech. Then Lamech took for himself two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the second was Zila, and Ada bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of those who play the harp and flute. And as for Zila, she also bore Tubal Cain, an instructor of every craftsman in bronze and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. It is possible that Lamech means conqueror in Hebrew. According to Cain's genealogy, he was the sixth child of Adam. Lamech's arrogance is a contrast to the godliness of Enoch, who was the sixth from Adam in Seth's line. The names of his wives and daughter show the emphasis of his heart. Ada means pleasure, ornament, or beauty. Zilla means shade, probably referring to a luxurious covering of hair. His daughter's name was Nama, which means loveliness. Lamech's culture was committed to physical and outward beauty, Lamech's arrogant boast. Genesis 4 verses 23 to 24. Lamech said to his wives, Adar and Zillah, listen to my voice, you wives of Lamech. Pay attention to my words, for I have killed a man for wounding me and a boy for striking me. If Cain is avenged seven times, then Lamech 77 times. Lamech boasted about his murder of another, and the way he believed he could promise more significant retribution than God demonstrates a gradual degeneration among humankind. 
the human race experienced rapid deterioration, which can be described as a de-evolution. We read, If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy-sevenfold. This is all a representation of a man-centered perspective. The city was Cain's city. The focus of Lamech was his beautiful wives and perceived strength. But for all of Lamech's boasting, neither he nor his descendants are ever heard of again in the Bible. He came to nothing. Sometimes curses may come from previous generations. Does this mean there is no hope? Does the human race continue like this? No, there is hope. As we move on, we discover that God has provided a remedy. The most notable member of Cain's descendants is the boastful Lamech. The 21 words of his speech constitute what is often considered an example of earliest poetry. Since the beginning of various aspects of civilization is highlighted in this section, the exchange of blows perhaps denotes the start of war among humans. Interestingly, with all the beginnings cited in this passage, there is no origin of kingship. This is of special interest, since in the records from the ancient Near East, kingship is one of the most significant developments within civilization. City building, multiple wives and initiation of warfare are three elements most consistently associated with kings in ancient literature. In Genesis 4, Lamech is most closely associated with typical actions linked with kingship. The text moves from unrepentant Cain to defiant Lamech. Violence is glorified, and the mark of Cain no longer stands as a stigma of exile, but as a badge of honor that offers protection equal to invulnerability. Verses 17 to 24 list Cain's posterity and a series of firsts. The first city, named Enoch, the first case of polygamy, the beginning of organized animal husbandry, the beginning of the art of music and of metal crafts, the first song concerning violence and bloodshed. In the song, Lamech explains to his wives that he killed a young man in self-defense, but that because it wasn't premeditated, like Cain's murder of his brother, Lamech would be much more immune from reprisal. By this speech of Lamech recorded here and probably much talked of in those times, he seems to have been a wicked man. First, observe how haughtily he talks to his wives, as one that expected mighty regard and observance. Hear my voice, you wives of Lamech. Second, how bloody and brutal he was to all about him. I have slain, or I would slay a man in my wound and a young man in my hurt. He owns himself a man of a fierce spirit. As the family of Cain perpetuated more rebellion against God, the line of Cain built the city of man. This project reached a climax later with the building of the Tower of Babel. Both then and now, men without God are driven towards building great empires in defiance of God. They typically consolidate power to establish a government that is empty of Christ's rule. Since Cain built his first city, this has been the passion of the men who run from God. Consider also the further rebellion of Lamech, Cain's great-great-great-grandson. Over a century after God's declaration against Cain, Lamech continued to mock and twist God's word. How does this passage teach us to walk with God in faith and obedience? The life of the vagabond, the wanderer, and the stranger is cursed. It is a life empty of long-term relationships, accountability, and an authentic community. It is very much the picture of life in the modern city. As men build their cities and roam from community to community, they gradually give up on maintaining close relationships and accountability. A heart that constantly seeks to stray from relationships with God and with brothers and sisters is not one we should desire. They become increasingly comfortable in their world of anonymity. Instead, let us strive to have good relationships with our families and churches. 
This is all we know about the family and posterity of cursed Cain until we find them all wiped out in the universal flood. Genesis 4 verses 25 to 26. Adam knew Eve as his wife again, and she gave birth to a son and named him Seth. For she said, God has granted another child for me in place of Abel, because Cain killed him. To Seth also a son was born, whom he named Enoch, mortal man, mankind. At that same time men began to call on the name of the Lord in worship through prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. After this terrible story of disobedience in Cain's line, the chapter ends with a light of hope. In contrast to Cain's line, God selected a new family tree. God gave Eve a son named Seth in place of Abel. Seth illustrated the same type of worship as his deceased brother Abel as people started to invoke the Lord's name in connection with Seth. Prideful worship as practiced by Cain points to himself. Humble worship as practiced by Abel and Seth calls out to God. Jude 11. Woe to them, for they have gone the defiant way of Cain, and for profit they have run headlong into the error of Balaam, and perished in the rebellion of mutinous Korah. It's no surprise that when God needed an obedient servant hundreds of years later, he chose Noah from Seth's line. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today mindful of the mysteries that surround the life of Cain and the woman he married. Just as their lives and experiences are shrouded in uncertainty, so too do we face moments in our own lives where the path ahead seems unclear. Lord, guide our steps as you guided theirs. In those times when we feel isolated, misunderstood, or distant, Remind us that your love and grace reach beyond what we can comprehend. Just as Cain found companionship and solace in his wife, grant us the strength and wisdom to build meaningful relationships with those around us, drawing us ever closer to you through our bonds with others. Teach us, O Lord, to be understanding and compassionate, recognizing that every person we encounter has a story a journey, and a purpose in your grand design. Let us never judge hastily, but always seek understanding. We thank you for the lessons we can draw from every story in your world, including that of Cain and his wife. We are reminded that even in moments of doubt, hardship, or uncertainty, you are always present and working in our lives. Bless and keep us, Father, as we walk this journey called life, drawing strength from your eternal love and finding our purpose in your plan. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.